At this time, we are waiting to hear from um, Board Member Rose Herrera. We hope that she will come here later. We will have a call to order at this time. And roll call. Chair Tucker? Here. Board Members Wasserman? Here. Constantine? Here. Thank you. <laughs> so, first item on the agenda is a report from the Public Advisory Commission, Walt Lines Chair. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And uh, um, at the most recent implementation board uh, uh, meeting, Gavilan College, of, of which I am the president of the Board of Trustees, uh, did receive uh, approval for the first stage of, the, uh, of our campus in the Coyote Valley. This is gonna be the Public Safety Training Consortium that is presently at uh, Evergreen College, and Evergreen is gonna be leasing that land for a commercial development, and have, uh, they've given the consortium a, uh, uh, they want us out of there by this, uh, by 2016, and, uh, um, and so this is gonna be going on um, on land we own that's across from the IBM site, Second phase is going to be an educational center and eventually a second campus for the college. And coincidentally, um, and so th th that's been six plus years in the making to get permits, uh, of which this agency here, um, it has made it happen. Uh, but uh, it has now been eight years and counting for permits in San Benito County and we did receive a phone call two weeks ago saying that uh, giving us verbal approval but we're still waiting uh, for the letter in the mail because when you're dealing with uh, state and federal wildlife agencies you never know uh, it's kind of like dealing with the Army Corps of Engineers <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. So uh, uh, from yeah. the, the Gavilan perspective, we want to thank the, uh, the agency for all the work that it has done. And I think this is a great example of what the agency is about. Thank you. Thank you all. Absolutely. At this time, we have a public comment for items not on the agenda. Is there anyone in the public that would like to make a statement? I don't see anything. On to consent calendar. Do I have a motion for a consent? I think we can, Madam Chair. Yeah, we oh, can't we do can't anything. do anything with the consent calendar. Okay, then on to, we will bypass item one and two and go on to regular business item three, as well an employment agreement. Ed will give us a report. Oh. I'm gonna give the report since it has to do with Ed's contract. Uh, but basically, uh, it's when the, Agency hired Mr. Sullivan. They hired him on a one-year period, which is, is now ending at the end of this month. So the implementation board uh, met and uh, re reviewed his performance and entered into some negotiations. And what you have before you is a contract that reflects those negotiations. There's not a substantial change to the current contract. The main points um, are the term which would be three years uh, compensation schedule over those three years that's spelled out in the staff report, a small increase to the automobile allowance and to the in lieu benefits. And uh, instead of having separate vacation, sick leave and administrative leave, putting that all into a paid time off package. Okay, any questions? Yes. Thank you. Um, just that is on. Um, just one question on page 109 where it talks about, and it has the bullets. The first bullet says the term of the agreement is from July 1st, 2014. And that's an should error, because it should be 15. Thank you. Sorry I didn't catch that. That's all right. Really but, but the contract itself has the right dates. Yes. <laughs> Are you sure? <laughs> yes, I am. I have it right here. Yes. So is this an informational item then? No, we have to adopt and We'll please. have to move yep. on. Yep. Thank you for your report. You're welcome. We'll move on to item number four, fiscal year 2015-2016 budget report. Yes, do you, uh, would you like me to give the presentation? No, uh, we're waiting. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Jason Bowman, 
Oh, great. Excellent. You know, I, when I sort have of events like the in San Jose in the morning, I make it on time <laughs> with all the traffic. <laughs> well, there's not more. Thank you, board today. members. Um, so um, presentation outline, just going to go over some of the same things that were talked about in the workshop. Um, so goals and objectives for the next fiscal year, and then a summary of the proposed uh, 16, 15, 16 budget. So the objectives are developing the financial and personnel policies, uh, create on-call consultant lists for restoration design, species monitoring survey, and uh, property appraisals. That's just sort of to speed up our ability just to go from a, a on-call list of consultants because we expect this to be a very robust uh, and active uh, tasks where we're going to have to be continuously doing property appraisals, continuously doing restoration design work and monitoring. So just to have some you know, five to six consulting firms, maybe more that we could choose from to, um, to do that work. So we'll be doing RFQs, requests for uh, qualifications this summer. Uh, complete the land enrollment processes on the three uh, public uh, properties, uh, Coyote Ridge, which will close escrow uh, in November, um, San Jose County Parks uh, Calero property, and the OSA Coyote Valley property. And this is uh, the, the second two are part of the in, uh, public land in lieu of fees program where OSA and, and the county are enrolling uh, public lands to offset land cover fees for county and OSA projects. Um, we'll begin negotiations with the intent to acquire one or more properties. That's the uh, subject of last week's or last month's closed session and also this meeting's closed session. Um, execute a borrowing owl management agreement with the city of San Jose and that's currently ongoing. Uh, submit section six grant uh, for two million. We'll be submitting it for um, probably a suite of properties and, and um, hopefully one of these deals will come through within the next uh, two years and we'll be able to use, the, and hopefully we'll get the money. Uh, solicit funding from other grant sources and foundations, work with the, N, um, work with the NGL community, secure foundation monies, submit, uh, so we're gonna submit three to four concept proposals on the local assistant grant uh, program through the state. Um, we'll see how those go and then we'll, sum, based on the feedback we get from them, then we'll submit full proposals this summer. Um, secure a regional general permit from the core, as you guys know, it's not going <laughs> talk about this at every meeting. Uh, uh, we're really close to completing the public sector land in lieu uh, of fees policy, so even though we are enrolling these lands. We didn't have an official policy in place yet. We have a private land in lieu program, but uh, we'll have the public land in lieu will go to the board in September for the board's approval. Uh, complete the reserve system land management and monitoring plan. So for all the lands we acquire, we gotta have sort of a master plan on how to manage them. And that's what this master template will be. And then each property will have their own unique uh, twist on that. Uh, uh, plan. And then it's the Black Mountain Financial Accounting and Tracking Software Integration, which our next budget next year will be presented using all that software. So the fiscal 1516 proposed budget gives the Habitat Agency the financial resources necessary to accomplish the goals and objectives outlined above. So this is um, a summary of the proposed budget where the general fund balance is projected to be um, a little over 4.1 million uh, on June 30th and of this year and we're expecting an ending balance of next June of almost 3.1 million and um, We'd be setting, we'd be spending uh, 1.8, or excuse me, 1.9 million would be the appropriations. We're setting aside 10 million for acquisitions and uh, nearly 2 million for reserve transfers into the endowment, into the reserve uh, sort of rainy day fund, and then for 
reimbursing the local governments for plan preparation fees. And you can see the, the estimated revenues, appropriations, and reserves and where they would be coming out of the different, different funds. Uh, potential revenue sources, uh, essentially our fees, uh, land cover, serpentine, nitrogen, um, burrowing owl, wetland, the PSE fees, and then we also have the endowment plan and preparation charge. Um, the list of grants uh, are the ones we expect uh, to get funding this year. It's, it's not, uh, it, I would say those and any other potential grants, but those are the ones that we uh, will be submit that we know we'll be submitting grant applications on. We might be doing things for restoration construction next year, but they would probably wouldn't get the, the monies until next fiscal year. The projected revenues uh, from the different uh, sources. And we do have an item in here for grants. Uh, it's just a projection. Hopefully um, we will get 3.1 million or somewhere in that range of grants. But we're estimating uh, revenues from fees to be over uh, $12,062,818 with grant revenues uh, hopefully being around 3.1 million for a total estimated revenues of 15 million uh, one hundred sixty two thousand eight hundred and eighteen dollars um, the budget estimate back in January for this fiscal year was uh, seven point seven million three hundred thirty five thousand the estimated actual is uh, projected to be six million two hundred thirty six thousand five hundred and sixty um, the county closes its books uh, officially at the end of July. The county is our financial agent, our banker, so to speak. So we will be giving fees from the various communities through July. That's what we've been told. Even though fees have been collected on a lot of projects already, they won't be remitted to us until July. And that's be a subject of my EO report <laughs> and how we can tighten that up. Oh, and I'll go back here. So, so you can see the pie chart there and how the various uh, revenues are broken out by source with 35% coming from land cover and 37% coming from Burrowing Owl. And the 37% is coming primarily from one project in the city of San Jose. Um, projected appropriations. Um, it's broken into three categories, administrative support and grant services, technical and permitting support, and conservation strategy implementation. And back in January, we thought we'd be spending about 1.7 million. The actual amount spent uh, is going to be 1,233,525. Where um, our budget request is um, for one million nine hundred and eight thousand ninety seven dollars and this is looking at the administrative support grant services and um, the budget request back in uh, January of this fiscal year estimated actual and the request for next year um, the budget requested was 877,455 estimated actual 775,375 and then we're requesting 1,033,097. Excuse me, Madam Chair. Yes. yes. Um, I have never looked, but I assume there's a screen up above here. It's yeah. on the side. Yeah. You're able to see. The, pub the public's yeah. able to see. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. We've got technology here. <laughs> I was going to call you and ask you that. <laughs> couldn't get through. Thank you. You're so quick. Uh, this is the technical permitting support. Um, and these are where uh, land cover fees, zone A, B, and C, and where the money would be coming from for technical plan interpretation and implementation. Information management, which is primarily the county uh, doing GIS services for us. 
and then uh, waters permitting that's the ongoing um, integration of 404 and 401 with the plan and then participating special entity processing this is uh, conservation strategy implementation and and you can see how the money is split out it's land enrollment reserve uh, well excuse me uh, wetlands restoration and creation we're projecting it to be two hundred sixty thousand um, dollars roughly a third of that will be a contract to do restoration design work on a couple wetlands in uh, Calero Park and then the balance of that will be to do additional restoration design work next uh, next year so the land enrollment reserve system creation that's um, enrolling the lands in the reserve system yeah and this is the endowment and plan prep cost reimbursement which is uh, 1.2 million for endowment and 120,000 625 for uh, plan prep. Thank you. Okay. Do we have any questions? I don't see oh. any. I'll so. make a motion to approve number uh, agenda item number three, unless Member Tucker has any, uh, excuse me, Member Herrera has any uh, questions. I'm good with that. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes for item number three. How about item number four? So, so Can I make a suggestion? you go back to the consent calendar and okay. item number two, or yeah, I'll go back to the consent go. calendar for item one and two, two together. And then motion to approve the consent calendar items one and two. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 So that motion passes. We just voted on item three, so now we are at actually you voted on item four. That I don't no, we, we did three. Three. You said three. Yeah. Okay. Th three was this contract. Yes. Four was the budget. So you did three. You yes. intentionally did three and not the budget, even though we just finished the budget presentation. <laughs> yes. I was just okay. My bad. I just wanted. No problem. Motion to approve item number four. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes. So we are now on item five, executive officer report. Yes. What about we'll closed closed session? Session? Oh, it's okay for closed session. Just seeking direction on. Um, but if they want to go into closed. Oh session. yeah, do you want to go in closed session? Sorry. Through the chair, if I may, Madam Council, do we need a, a quorum in closed session to do what needs to be done? It's not absolutely required, but it would probably be preferable. And so, if you're more interested in the closed session items than in his general report you could adjourn to closed session and then okay. he can come back and give his we'll general report uh, we'll do that uh, at this time we'll go into closed session for item conference with real property negotiator item a and b into the conference room what is the estimated time so ed, ed. that we gave direction to staff to con continue with negotiations. That is it. We are on item five of our agenda. Yes. And just give you an update on the regional general permit that we're trying to get with the U.S. Army Corps. And this is integrating um, the wetland permitting process, the 404 permits, with the, the Habitat Agency to sort of combine um, two permitting processes which would result in streamlining of both those processes that would benefit uh, both public and private projects so we we had a meeting with uh, the San Francisco district staff on May 29th um, we we made some good progress on on that um, meeting but there was also some concerns. There was a comment letter that was from the San Francisco Regional Water Quality Board that was uh, issued in, on June 5th. 
uh, of last year, and it it was not um, ever released to us, um. and we had no idea that there was a comment letter from Brian Wines of the Regional Board and his counterpart at the Central Coast Regional Board, John Rohrbach. They told us there were no comment letters on our um, application, so it that that letter went on addressed for a year so we uh, that came to light on May 29th the letter was addressed June 5th of last year oh my goodness so I got to do damage control I got I'm gonna call Brian Wines and John Rohrbach and apologize and explain to them what happened <coughs> we we sent an email to the South Pacific Division uh, management team saying we had no confidence in the San Francisco district to do the work um, and it was stating that they, they've they said in minutes of meetings that, that were during uh, Ken Schreiber's uh, uh, time period, tenure, that clearly stated they didn't believe in an in-lieu fee program, that they didn't believe in implementing in-lieu fee programs. And really that's the only way you can effectively man, uh, implement a regional general permit. So we stated that in the email to the staff uh, that within within two days I got a um, call from Brigadier General um, Toy apologizing for process mismanagement and unacceptable delays. So on June 16th we got a letter from Lieutenant Colonel Morrow who is in charge of the San Francisco district. He, he's now been there a year so uh, hopefully he knows and has a better understanding of what's going on on the ground with his uh, agency and that uh, it's dysfunctional. So um, we're in the process of responding to his letter. He's asking us to s essentially give them a second chance and they're gonna process our permit um, rapidly. We don't have a lot of confidence in that. So we're gonna, s we're, we're responding, we're, we're drafting a response to his, his letter and we're gonna request a meeting directly with him and General Toy, just that we need some insurances that this will be done and it will meet the needs of the co-permittees and public and private proponents of projects. And it, because getting this will help facilitate integration of the 401 process also with our plan. And from what I've been hearing from the city of San Jose, the 401 process is, is slowing up very simple routine maintenance projects that the city public works department has um, yeah, due to the, I think the, um, you know, aggressive regulatory um, process that the regional board has. So if we can work with them to simplify that and coordinate that and to streamline that, then um, that would help all applicants. So, um, that's kind of where we're at. Um, pending the outcome of the meeting with General Toy and Colonel Morrow, I've sort of been holding off on the letter coming from the two chairs of the two boards. We'll see how that meeting goes, see if we, we, we think we have the assurances to stay in the San Francisco district and that they will effectively implement the RGP, not just issue a permit. But if, if, if not, if we don't get those assurances, we're, we're going to you know, ask um, um, the congressional delegation and also um, the local electeds to um, send letters to request it going to um, Sac Sacramento District. I'm hoping, because there'll be a startup cost in time going to a new district office. So if, if, if we can get the assurances we need, then it probably makes more sense at this time to stay with San Francisco, but we'll wait and see. Right. Thank, thank you. That's always great when you get an apology from a brigadier general. Um, when, when will you be getting your response back to them, and when do you anticipate having the meeting with the general and, and lieutenant colonel? Yes, I, I, um, I got a re I, uh, lieutenant colonel Morrow responded to an email I sent him today, and he said that they could uh, uh, organize a meeting with us within the next few weeks. So I imagine sometime in July we can we can meet with. The colonel and the general. Okay, if we may give direction to staff through this agenda item, 
um, it would certainly be my desire to respond as soon as possible, set up mm -hmm. the meeting as soon as possible. Yeah. And um, the fact that he, the Colonel responded to your email today that you sent today, mm -hmm. that's all very encouraging. And mm -hmm. just in my years on this and on the Powell River Valley water flood, dealing with the Army Corps, it seems the people in charge change every couple, three years. And if we could strike while the iron's hot and we've got a responsive air right now, I think do that because extension of time, the cost to us ultimately moving to Southern California office or the Sacramento office or whatever, just you start this whole thing over again. I, um, I encourage you to, to get out your response and set up an appointment as soon as possible. I will. Thank you. Yeah, and I agree. Um, the other item is just um, we're starting to work on creating financial policies. And, and, and the big thing is um, fees are coming in when they're not. Well, fees are, the fees are being paid and then it's taking several months for them to be remitted to us, <laughs> which kind of throws a, a wrench in our budget planning. Fortunately, we have enough money in the bank to sort of, it, it's not a concern, but um, from that standpoint, but it's a concern from, uh, projecting end of year budgets, projecting new fiscal year budgets. So we're gonna to come to the, that I guess it would be the governing board probably, that we would come to um, in September with financial policies, including saying upon receipt of a check, you need to remit it to us within seven, five business days, with what, whatever we work out, whatever is comfortable, and that uh, with, with, with the board and that if they're not, maybe having some built-in penalties if, if the money isn't remitted to the agency within a, a prompt period of time. Because we're really struggling with uh, budget uh, sort of management with, with fees coming in three, four, six months after when the checks That's were. ridiculous. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So can I have a question? Is um, is it built into our contract to use them as our bank? Can we go to any agency? Oh, no. No, it's not the county. It's the co-permittees that's the problem. Sorry. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the county is the bank is fine. The banker, yeah. I don't know if you want to pizza. Yeah, I, I don't uh, mind. Now. I apologize if I didn't, I didn't make that. On the mayor of yeah, Gilroy, I can I, take on the county. I, I apologize if I didn't Cat make that clear. Tucker. <laughs> No, it's so it's it's Sheriff? more yeah. um, Cat Tucker. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> I know the sheriff. I step on toes, but not feet. <laughs> I have no problem. So, and it and many times it's not the planning departments; it's the finance departments of the of the of our partner agencies that like to hold on to the money and get interest on it. I'm assuming, or whatever's going on. So, <laughs> it's not good for us. I can okay. understand how it's good okay. for them. We also in the process of. Um, developing um, an endowment financial strategy. We're gonna be meeting with some potential trustees <coughs> of, for managing our endowment over the next uh, couple months. Okay. So we'll keep you abreast on that and other financial policies that we'll be developing and bringing uh, before the board. Um, Joe Arch, uh, uh, our CPA, so JJA uh, CPA will be helping us with developing the financial policies. The Black Mountain financial accounting and tracking software, as I mentioned, will be integrated this in, in August with our with all our existing QuickBooks system, and we'll make the transition, I believe, by September 1st into the new system. Um, I'm work haven't started yet, but I'm gonna next week. I'm gonna work on a job description for the senior program manager position, and then we'll uh, gonna do a recruitment. We're gonna work with. Uh, CPS HR to help with sort of broadcasting um, the job uh, out in the greater world out there to 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 try to shake as many bushes as possible and get the best candidate, candidate here. Yeah. Okay. Any questions for moving on the agenda down to future governing board initiated agenda items? Does anybody have anything they want to add to the agenda for next session? I don't see any. I just had a question. Yes. Um, and it's about agenda item two, which you already handled. But 
I was, and, and through the chair, if I may, to Mr. Sullivan, um, I was reading this report, and I'll read just one sentence to give you an idea of, I, I guess I'm asking who wrote this. I'm just interested in the, the technical expertise. Yes. And the, the one sentence, for instance, it said, the diverted flows eroded a swath of the hill slope and joined surface flows in the subject swale to create a head cut, which subsequently eroded headward along the axis of the swale for a distance of 150 feet. Um, who, is that Kayla, you? Kayla, no, no, it wasn't me. Kailash, <laughs> if you could stand. The late John Muir. Oh. <laughs> Ah, okay, thank you. I just, um, I had to read it a few times, to, to, but there's, it's obvious an expertise I have no knowledge of, and I just wondered who was responsible for these reports. Thank you. Okay, okay then if there are no other future agenda items, we will adjourn. Our upcoming meeting is September 17, 2015. We are adjourned. Thank you. Here, Good job, Madam Chair. <laughs> This is a very ruly group. <laughs> very ruly or unruly? Unruly, I'm sorry, unruly. <laughs> <laughs>